Welcome to WorkSpan TV. I'm World at Work's Ryan Johnson. In this segment, I'm talking to Heg Nalbantian and Brian Kelly from Mercer about the Mercer World at Work survey, which is called Metrics and Analytics, Patterns of Use and Value. Now, the survey is about to come out, Brian. Let me just talk to you for a minute. Talk to me about some of the key findings from this collaboration that we've conducted. Well, the exciting part is we had over 500 organizations that participated in the survey. And the vast majority of organizations are using analytics in some way, shape, or form. And we think that's the good news. Uh, further good news is they're making better business decisions because of the use of analytics. Some of the opportunities we think for organizations to improve on how they use data centers around what types of data they use. About 95% of organizations surveyed as part of this process use benchmarks as a primary means of their analytics initiatives. Benchmarks are important, but we don't think they're the leading indicator, or the tip of the spear, if you will, for more advanced analytics initiatives. It's consistent, we think, with what compensation professionals have used over time, both internal benchmarks and external benchmarks. How do we compare to others with pay? How do we compare within our own organization with pay? But we think there are different ways that organizations can start to use different either processes, tools, or techniques in analytics to drive more impactful decision making. So the idea of using what if scenarios or coming up with causation and correlations within our analytics initiatives, it's much more powerful than simply looking at benchmarks. So we think it's exciting that folks are using this much data and this type of analytics, but we think there are an awful lot of opportunities that they can still capture. So some of the concepts that he just mentioned, Hague, fairly sophisticated stuff for, for as what Brian said, you know, the, the comp professional is very comfortable in benchmarking. What about this idea of predictive analytics and scenario building? This is a little bit of a stretch for some comp professionals, isn't it? It's a bit of a stretch, but it's something we're seeing much more of in the broader HR community. Uh, at least a decade, uh, maybe more, we're seeing more and more organizations uh, focus on the impact of their human capital practices. So not just how your rewards, for instance, set up against the competition, how competitive they are against market, but what's their impact on retention? What's their impact on the development of talent? So I think it's inculcated in organizations. It was very striking to us to see uh, this heavy emphasis still on the external comparison emerging from this survey when so much of the analytics work we're seeing is more oriented to understanding what happens to employees once they're in organizations. So that broader value proposition. How do I develop? Um, what kind of assignments do I get? What's the value of a career here versus uh, going elsewhere? Those aren't things you can easily capture with external comparisons alone. You need to do that deep dive into your own organization's data that's where we see analytics going. Brian, this was the first time that World at Work and Mercer have collaborated on this topic, uh, and it was a survey of the World at Work membership. W were there any things that surprised you uh, in this go-round? Did, did the data come out as you expected, or was there something that surprised you? I think it was pretty consistent with what we expected. I think there were a couple of surprises when we really dig into the data. First, most senior level executives are actually looking for more predictive analytics and not benchmarks. And the survey respondents were saying that is the type of information they want to provide, but yet they weren't providing that type of information to senior executives. Many cited a lack of comfort with data or data quality. And this is something we hear across the board with organizations, whether it's in the comp function or other functions within HR. What we find, however, is it's a little bit of a myth. Once organizations start to source some of the data from the different systems they may have purchased over the last five, 10 years, with the explosion of software as a service type data platforms, we find that the data actually is of a level of quality. They can start to do more of the predictive types of analytics. So, hey, what should compensation professionals do with this data, or how can they advance this analytics cause within their own organization? I, I think the major thing is to, uh, to break through the silo and start to uh, interact more coherently with other parts of the HR function. It's kind of ironic that one traditionally associated the comp function with the strongest analytical bent, the strongest uh, analytical capability. Kind of people who were interested in numbers, people who did some of the more advanced work on uh, economic value added, value drivers to understand what drove performance. And yet it seems that over the years that analytic perspective has been 
uh, put to a, a, in, a, in a more narrow uh, set of areas, not looking at the broader workforce uh, capabilities. It's really interesting in the survey, if you look at the areas they say where data is weakest or their ability to work with the data is most limited, relates to the asset side of the human capital equation. On the behavioral side, they seem to be comfortable, but things relating to the educational attainment of the workforce, skills, competencies, experiences of the workforce, they're saying they don't know enough about it or don't have good enough data there. That's the area where broader HR, where the talent people, uh, where the HR function leaders have been uh, most focused and where more of the analytical capabilities that we're seeing in workforce analytics are playing out. When you think about analytics as a function, it's a relatively new function. It's an older discipline. There are analytics that were run in a compensation function or in a talent function or a staffing function, the silos, if you will, within HR. But as a standalone function, it's relatively new. And it's not surprising that whether compensation professionals or recruiting professionals, they're executing in silos. They're not aware of what's happening outside their specific functional area of HR. That's where we see an awful lot of the progress in analytics occurring, cross-functional teams or many times separate teams that are staffed and compensation is not invited into that discussion. It is surprising, as Haig mentioned, in that the skill set, the capabilities that are required are resonant within the compensation function. And the data is starting to bear out why that's occurring. People really are in silos in their own organizations. It has to do with the maturity of the function, it has to do with it's relatively new, and it's not a standalone capability in many organizations. I'd venture to guess, and we don't have data from this study that would, would share, uh, show this, about 50% of organizations are starting to staff an independent function, about 50% do not have independent functions. And I think that's why you start to see a little bit of the silos occurring in the data. I think it goes back to, in the end, what questions you ask. I think the comp function and comp professionals have been very uh, attuned to, a long experience asking the question, how competitive is our compensation, even our total rewards package to the market? They're very comfortable asking, what's the sensitivity of our compensation to performance uh, and uh, vice versa? Those have been the questions that dominated their thinking. What they haven't been uh, focused on enough is how does our total rewards package affect who is in our workforce, the kinds of people we secure, as well as uh, what they do. And by limiting themselves to that behavioral side, I think what's, what's uh, happened is they've limited the analytical capability as well. When they start to ask the broader questions, I think the natural affinity with broader HR will, will take over and you'll have total rewards really being total rewards that is speaking to the entire employment proposition. And the opportunity there is closer integration, and you mentioned this uh, before we started the, the discussion, alignment with HR business partners. That HR function that's m closest to the business, it's their consultant. They're understanding the drivers of either productivity, revenue growth, margin expansion, entrance into new markets, et cetera, from a business standpoint. And they translate those business requirements back into talent initiatives, compensation initiatives, et cetera. And we think that having the comp function more closely aligned and working with HR business partners will get them outside of answering their traditional questions and allow them to answer more holistic questions about the workforce where those skills and capabilities that clearly are resonant based on the survey responses can be, uh, me be more broadly displayed and bring greater value not only to the HR function but through the HR business partners to the actual lines of business. I want to thank my guests from Mercer, Brian Kelly and Hagen Albantian. We're here talking about the Metrics and Analytics Mercer and World at Work survey, and it's available on worldatwork.org. I want to thank my guests again for WorkSpan TV and for World at Work. I'm Ryan Johnson.